So now, Nathan, Jan, and Adrian are gonna show you a glimpse of 3D across the desktop, web, and runtime. They're gonna tie it all together with a common information architecture using web scenes and scene layers that will allow you to deliver your 3D content to the custom application of your creation anywhere in the enterprise. Thank you very much. Sorry for the slides. And, and over to you, Nathan. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks, Chris. <clears throat> so I just want to make it really clear I did not switch Chris's slides. I'm not responsible for that one. Uh, so my name is Nathan Shepard. Uh, I work on uh, 3D in the software development team in Redlands. And I'm going to show you some desktop stuff. We're starting here in uh, City Engine. And if you've seen City Engine before, hopefully you have, you know that it's really good at content creation. It can turn boring things like polygons into 17th century Parisian buildings, which can be very handy. And what you might not know is that you can also use it for doing procedural symbology. So here we have a 3D model from Pictometry. It's got textures on it already. And we can grab a symbol and just drop it on and render it in a different way. So this is actually drawing like stripes per floor. Right now it's set to three, but we could say five floors or 25 floors or 11 floors just by changing a number. If we look at the symbol here, you can see this little white thing on top. We want to exclude the roof from this striping of the floors. Right now that's set to two meters, which is not right for this building. And we could change the number just for this building, or we can think about the user experience for this symbol, and we can expose that as a real attribute that can be configured on the symbol. So we'll regenerate that. And now we have another thing that we can mess around with. We can change the roof height. We can type in a number. We can use the slider. If we know the exact number, we can just type it in. And we've got our symbol. So now that we've got this symbol, we want to use it elsewhere in the system. So we're in City Engine. We want to get this symbol out and use it elsewhere. We just right click and say Share As. We're going to create a rule package. Now, rule packages, I can put them as an item on online or portal, or I can save it to a file as an RPK file, include the source code if I want to see uh, people to see the code and maybe adjust it, and then just share that. Just fill in uh, other item information if needed. And then to consume that elsewhere, really simple. So here we are in ArcGIS Pro. We have those same buildings, textured buildings, and we're going to change the symbology. We're going to add in procedural, procedural symbol, and we'll connect that up to that RPK, that rule package that was published a second ago, and apply that. And now, all of our buildings are now rendered without textures and with these, these three stripes as the default. But because we did a good job authoring the symbol, we can do something quite interesting. We can attach attributes to the symbol. So every building has a different number of floors, and every building has different roof height, we just connect that as up to the feature attributes, hit apply. And now all of the buildings are rendered the correct way. So we've authored the symbol and then just configured it. And because it is a symbol, we can actually really quickly just save this out to our style. And then we can use our gallery. So we can switch between a textured view of that data or that's pre-configured uh, ramp view where we can see the floors just with one click. This is really important because you want to sort of protect users from having to go to City Engine and author CGA. You can just create the rule package. You can author the symbol, wrap all of that up, and then it's just one single click. And they've got the type of symbology on the content uh, right here in 3D. And it doesn't just work for stripy buildings. You can do it for other symbols as well. So here's that polygon. And we have a Parisian building symbol. I can just click on, click on the symbol. We'll have that redraw. And with one click, we've got 17th century Parisian buildings in Pro. So it all works together. And desktop isn't just about content creation and, and symbol authoring uh, and scene authoring. It's also about analysis. So we can go look at some analysis that we ran earlier. We have uh, some fire hydrants and fire hose reach. So this is the 100, 200, and 300 foot fire hose reach from this particular hydrant. 
And you can see that we've got a 3D network that goes up on the side of the building there. If we look at the analytical results for that hydrant, we actually go up and into the building. And as this draws, we can see that even though this fire hydrant is outside the building, it actually can come in and service a large part of the interiors as well. The thing that's interesting about this network, it was actually created with Python. If you're interested in learning more about how to make these kinds of networks programmatically, uh, you can check it out at the 3D Island at the showcase. They'll show you how that's done. Uh, it's very, very cool uh, and really good for emergency planning. The third thing that you do with desktop is you share this content out with others to be used in other, other uh, departments or in other uh, apps. And to do that, in Pro, you just author the scene with the contents. We've got the interiors and the exteriors of the buildings here. And you just go share web scene. And I just have to fill in a little bit of information, summary, and tags. I'm already signed in, so it knows where it's going to go off and, and publish its content to. And I hit share. And then I can use this elsewhere, including the web scene viewer. So this is just web page. And we'll go look at the web scene. And here we are, San Diego. We come down and look at the convention center, zoom in a little closer, look at the interiors. All of that information has been published and made available. And this app actually does quite a lot of stuff. I can switch out the base map. We'll come down and get a nice little viewpoint here. And I can even modify it, add another slide or another bookmark. We'll call this one a view. And now I have my three slides with different base maps, different viewports, and different layers on and off. And to share this, all I need to do is save it and share the URL. So the Web Scene Viewer is actually built using the JavaScript API.